chance for Anthony Young to snap his 22-game losing streak. The pitcher starting. If he loses, it ties the major league record for consecutive losses. His teammates didn't help him a bit. That's Eddie Murray. Frank Bollock hit it, and Murray bollocked it up. And then uh, Doug Saunders with one of his two errors, three errors, three unearned runs in the game. And then Montreal, terrific defense. What a catch by Moise Alou, robbing Chico Walker with the Expos up 6-1, thwarting a Mets comeback. Yes, 23 skidoo. Very good sign. This is the exclamation point. A poor call by Charlie Williams. Called strike three on Bobby Bonilla late in the game. Dallas Green was mad. Bobby Bonilla was mad. Bobby didn't get tossed. Dallas got in the way before that happened. Then gave Charlie a piece of his mind. And by the time Bobby was at the bench, Dallas was tossed from the game. And then, in one of the more interesting moves, Dallas throws the stool at him. Uh, coming dangerously close to Charlie. That'll be a fine, I'm sure. And that's right, Anthony, if you had any luck, it'd all be bad. It's been bad luck for Young, who has been victimized by unearned runs, has seen his team outscored 124 to 63 during this 23 consecutive loss streak, tying the major league record. 82 years it has stood with Cliff Curtis, who lost 23 in a row in 1910. Inca Villa on deck. Bobby Cox says, let's walk Dalton intentionally. Pitch to Inky. And the outfielder makes Pete Smith pay to left and over the fence. Three run shot is 12th of the year. And that was the story. 5 2. The game was over, except for this note Francisco Cabrera. There are home runs, there are blasts, and then there's this one. This one in the upper deck at the vet. Oh, the 38th upper deck homer at the vet. That's a pretty piece of hitting, folks. Still, Philly wins 5-3. Pete Smith has lost six straight decisions, hasn't won since April 24th. Jim Eisenreich had three hits, and the Phillies have won four or five. Battery Benito Santiago. Big night for him. Base hit off of Real Cormier, Junior Felix, and Dave Magadan make it 4 0 Marlins. Santiago, three RBI. He'd later add a homer. Les Lancaster comes in for Cormier with Felix on second. He and Tom Pagnazzi. I think we're a wee bit crossed up. That was a strike, but a pass ball. Felix goes to third. Why do we show you this? Two pitches later, they are crossed up again, and Felix scores, adding another Marlin run. They were befuddled. Joe Torre was befuddled. Very nice, Joe. Brian Harvey on for his 21st save, and the Marlins win 7-5, snapping a uh, season high, a franchise high, four-game losing streak. Hammond has won his last six starts. Ray Langford left the game with a sore wrist. Chuck Carr set out with a pulled hamstring. The quirky Turk Wendell starting for Chicago in Pittsburgh. Bottom of the first, he could be quirky, but he was easy to hit. Orlando Merced singles, Bell and Al Martin score. Jim Lefevre says it might be that he's just not ready for the majors at this point. Still, he brushed his teeth and didn't touch the line. He might be just so excited that he's in the bigs, he's not pitching as well as he possibly can. But Bob Walk pitched terrifically, equaling a career best with a three-hitter as the Pirates win 7-2. Walk, known as Whirly Bird for his wild antics, knew that he met his match on Tuesday night when Wendell's licorice strands were getting caught in Walk's cleats while Bob Walk pitched. Kevin Young was 4 for 4. Albert Bell, a pitcher's nightmare this season. Bottom of the fourth, no score until Albert Bell goes the opposite way. Good enough for a triple in the gap. His first three bagger of the year scores Kenny Lofton. Indians led one zip. Bottom of the seventh, Brewers up 2-1. Albert Bell, yeah, freeze it, I know. He knows it. It's gone. So does Cal Eldred. 20th of the year, second in two games for Mr. Bell. Tied at two. And then the defensive gem of the night on the following play, Paul Sorrento going deep. And there is Daryl Hamilton. What a catch. There's a Darrell who can play outfield. The Indians go on to win it, though, 3-2. to two. They stop Cal Eldred's winning streak at three. Albert Bell, a double short of a cycle. He has 60 ribbies. Heathcliff, oh, Heathcliff. Well, he won his second. Boston hosting Minnesota. Jim Deshays, a winner in his last three decisions on the hill for the Twins. No score, bottom first until Mike Greenwell does something he hasn't done at Fenway in almost two seasons. He hit a home run. It was a two-run shot, 2-0 two Red Sox. Nine RBIs for Greenwell in his last seven games. 3 nothing Sox in the fourth. Winfield continues to hit in tough luck. Look at Bob Zupsik. Nice catch. Sox win, 4-1. Paul Quantrill gets his first win as a starter. Boston will send ex-Washington State star Aaron Seeley to the mound Wednesday night against the Twins. At Sparky's man. First inning, two on, and Travis Fryman sends one to left center and into the bullpen. No, into the seats. A three-run homer, his tenth. Mike Mussina. Gone after an inning and two-thirds, his shortest major league outing to the third. Tigers lead 5-1.
and Mickey Tettleton take down one Mills where few pitchers have been taken at Camden Yard Camden Yards nearly hitting the warehouse hit the warehouse on a hop 6-1 Tigers but Chris Hoyles leads the O's back down 7-1 in the fourth remember that a solo homer his 10th at 7-2 to the sixth the rally continues the Tiger lead is one not anymore Harold Baines rips a single to center Mark McLemore ties it at seven still in the sixth Mike Devereaux at the plate well it looks like the inning was going to end but Alan Trammell at third boots it Devereaux beats it out the O's take the lead then Hoyles of Kurt Knudsen into the night without Rick Dees and out of the yard a grand slam a career best six RBI an eight run sixth all happening after two were out in Baltimore rallies to win 12 9 their best comeback in four years so Sparky denied win 20 40 for now every Baltimore starter scored once and had a hit in the Tigers yet to win at Camden Yards to Sky Dome Yanks and the Blue Jays start a series John Olrude trying to extend his hitting streak to left field and it extends the hitting streak off of Melito Perez 26 straight games with a hit for John Olrude top three Jack Morris battered around down three nothing Danny Tartable goes down, gets one, and sends it out to center field. What a blast. 4 nothing Yanks, but Toronto comes back. Head spray off of Melito Perez. Solo shot to left in the Jays deficit. Down to two. It's down to one in the bottom of the eighth. The go-ahead runs are on, and Pat Porters brings him in just past Boggs. Olerud scores from second. Tony Fernandez coming around, and he will beat the relay as well. The Jays rally. From down 4 0 to win 5 4. Olerud, 4 for 4. You see his average. He has the longest hit streak since Jerome Walton's 30 straight in 1989. The Jays have won seven in a row. They're in second, one behind the Tigers. Woody Williams faced one batter and gets the win. Yanks' win streak stopped at four. Cincinnati and Colorado. Speaking of 400 hitters who are first baseman, Andres Galarraga, three for five on the night against the Reds. He's now hitting 431. This game was wild. There go the runners. Hop towards left. Jones will score. 3 2. Uh oh. This one's hit deep to left center. That's going to be out of here. Towards the hole and through for a base hit. Oliver will score. Here comes Samuel. He'll score. Line drive, right field, base hit. Here comes Larkin. The edge of the grass. This one bounced towards third. It'll be through for a base hit. And Mitchell will score. And the Reds finally have a lead 6 to 5. Uh oh. Make it two for three and two home runs. Fair ball. Samwell scores to tie it. Up the middle, base set for Varsho. A big knock. It'll get two more runs home, and Cincinnati leads it 14 to 11. This one hit hard to left. That is back, and it's going to be gone. This one hit deep to center field. Back is Kelly. He's not going to catch this one. What a wallop by the big cat. Wow. This one way back and left. Clark against the wall. It's going to be gone. Clearly, best highlights I've done all year, huh? <laughs> that was, it was like watching a softball game, folks. 29 runs, 35 hits. The Reds win 16-13. Bobby Kelly had an RBI in five straight at-bats. Mitchell, two doubles, a triple, and a homer. It is the fifth time in 38 games that there have been over 20 runs scored by the teams at mile high. Billy Bean in a scoreless game. Bean with a shot. Is it fair? Is it foul? Is it fair? Is it foul? Is it fair? Says umpire Greg Bonet down the first baseline. Uh, Ricky Gutierrez scores 1-0. Padres Greg Bonet very happy he didn't make the wrong call. Bottom of the seventh, Jeff Reed this time against Andy Bennis. Reed, the solo shot right over Bean's glove. 2-1 Padres. Bennis would settle down against Mike Benjamin. Here's an example. The chopper in the hole. Ricky Gutierrez, nice play. Great tag here by Kevin Higgins at first. Out, 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 says Greg Benet, no doubt about that call. 2-1, the final. Bennis goes eight strong innings for his eighth win. He scattered five hits. Billy Bean, a third, the double steal. Mike Piazza, the throw to second. Lenny Harris's return throw, too late. Bagwell scores 2-1, Astros. Top of the ninth now. Bagwell wasn't finished in the scoring department. This time, he goes deep off Roger McDowell. Number 11 for Mr. Bagwell, no doubt about that one. 5-1, Astros. 
all five runs unearned, mainly because the Dodgers committed five errors. The only Dodger run came on a solo home run by Eric Davis. Form there he is. He actually hinted he might enter Cooperstown wearing black and white. The fans were there to honor the commander for his historic effort. I hope this isn't viewed upon as being the end. I think this is part of the journey. It's not a destination, but part of the journey. I know that time has taken its toll. The show is just starting, though. Bo Jackson riding in on the motorcycle that was given to Pudge from his teammates, Fisk, a big Harley-Davidson fan, and then Carlton sharing the moment with his two daughters, his son and his parents and his wife, all were on hand for the occasion. His wife actually paid for a banner that was flown overhead at Comiskey. She also paid for the banner that was flown over at Fenway. And then, to make it official, Alex Fernandez's pitch, Fisk keeps the ball, breaks the record. He never got to keep the ball from his dramatic World Series home run in 75. George Foster actually threw it in the stands. To the game, bottom of the ninth, tied at two, and Lance Johnson plays hero with the bases loaded, driving in Frank Thomas with a winning run. So, a White Sox victory on Carlton Fisk night. The White Sox can sweep Texas with a win on Wednesday. As for Pudge's memorable evening, he went 0 for 2 with a sacrifice night for the Royals. David Cohn, though, in trouble early with the game tied at two. Gary DeSarcina finds some room, scoring Kelly Gruber, 3-2 Angels. Royals fight back in the fifth. Felix Jose continues his hot hitting. Driving in Brent Main and Greg Gagne with that hit. One of two for Felix. Put the Royals up 4-3. Felix hitting 560 in his last five games. That is Gary Gaetti, and that is Gary Gaetti adding some insurance in the bottom of the fifth. His first home run as a Kansas City Royal as the Royals go on to win this one 5-3. For David Cohn, his first win in eight tries at Royals Stadium. Scott Sanderson drops his fifth straight decision. The loss drops the Angels into second place a game back for winning his seventh. For Craig Paquette, his third home run of the year. The A's, what do you know, have won three straight games.